Here's the Lafayette HA63. I've got the speaker hooked up. Doesn't have one in the cabinet. And I've got it on the AM band, our broadcast band. And we got pretty close to one of the stations here. And let's see here. So I'm <coughs> receive. Here's the gain, and I'm going to turn on the variac and bring up the voltage slowly. Okay, let's see here. That's about about 70 volts. And I can see a little light lit. Oh, there's some noise. Ah, filter caps are bad. the antenna right here. I don't hear anything yet. Well, a little bit more voltage. There's 90 volts. Everything's really dirty, of course. Oh, good. Good. Definitely need filters in place. And this one alligator clip is the only antenna. So there's not much of an antenna on it. Well, this will be worthwhile taking apart and replacing the electrolytics. And we'll see what it sounds like. Well, this is what it looks like now after working on it for about an hour blowing uh, dirt out. I should have taken a picture of it. Man, this thing, I think it's about the dirtiest radio that I ran across. And I was using a you know, can of air and a paintbrush. And I'll clean it up some more in a little bit. Here's the bottom of the radio. 
and it blew out very nice. It actually was pretty clean on the inside. And here are the microfarad capacitors that need to be replaced, the electrolytics. There are 40 microfarads at 300 volts. Here's the wiring diagram of the radio, and this is the two electrolytic capacitors that I'm going to replace. If you look at the bottom of the electrolytic capacitors, you can see cracks. So it's definitely dried out. Here I've replaced the electrolytic capacitors, removed the wires from the two electrolytic capacitors in the cans, and what I replaced them with is two 47 microfarad capacitors at 450 working volts. Now I cleaned up the chassis a little bit more. Looks a little bit better. And here is the setup. So now it's time to put this back on the Variac and we'll see what happens. Okay. I'm going to try it again and with the same setup, one alligator clip as an antenna. Okay, power's on. Bring this up uh, to about 60 volts. I don't really hear anything yet. Well, let's bring it up some more. It's not drawing excessive current. Oh, there's a little something. Every single patient. That's a pretty good success rate. We're talking oh. about much, much better. Curing the type 2 diabetes and help the patients move themselves from the sick category. Much, much better. So successful, they're already looking to expand, but a dozen other locations. Pennsylvania and New Jersey. The kids spend pretty much every second okay. on their smartphones. I can hear your parents saying, Sam, obviously you don't have kids because that is a stupid question. Of course they do. Well, CBS News correspondent Vladimir Dugier says some go. people in Colorado think it's time for a ban on smartphone sales to very young kids. They're always... Working mom in Denver... Restricts the amount of time her two kids spend on their phones. Dr. Tim Farnham says he's trying to help. I'm uh, with a group we're trying to get uh, a ballot initiative. He's drumming up support through his organization, Parents Against Underage Smartphones, for a proposal to outlaw sales of smartphones. To ask about the age of the intended user and could face fines for multiple violations is not right. We are just, we're abandoning kids to technology and it's doing them a lot of harm. But that sounds pretty good. Bipartisan opposition. A Democrat. Well, with a good antenna, This is going to be a Supporters nice radio. Still have to collect almost 100,000 signatures to get it on next year's ballot. The proposal would continue to allow sales of basic cell phones for kids, just not smartphones. There we go. Thanks for watching.